it's your girl Barbie J here and we are talking about Bell Collective Season 1 Episode 6 Sage and Champagne and we all know that comes at the end at Antoinette's party so let's begin first with me giving shout outs to people in my comment section hold me down every week then we got Bridget Squire, Lamont Simpson, Ty Harrell, Shanice Says, Isaiah Hill, Tia Devine, Tiffany Harrell, and Bobby Ray, just to name a few. So, it starts off with Latrice and Latricia. You know what, before I even start that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Look out for a sister, you know. Just hit that little subscribe, red subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell. And then you will be reminded of every time I upload something, a new review, which is usually at least four or five a week. So let's begin now. Thank you, subscribers. Okay, it starts with Latrice and Letitia. Letitia, they are meeting up. And the reason they're meeting is because Letitia wants to share with um, Latrice what is going on with the announcement she made at the brunch. The brunch that, of course, Latrice didn't want to go to. She said it was a stupid brunch. Anyway, so she wants to um, tell her because she's a powerful black entrepreneur, she feels, and she needs her to invest. And so she's telling her um, all about it. Latrice thinks it's a great idea, you know, and... um. Then, oh God, that's when uh, Marie makes the mistake and says, um, she shares that Marie is investing. And I was like, dang, why did she say that? As soon as she said, because you know my girl Marie is investing in da da da. And now I was like, boop. And I knew it. As soon as they cut over to Latrice going, how am I tell her I don't really want to invest because Marie's in it too and blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, here we go. You know, they got to get over some of that stuff, you know. But anyway, she's like, she's mean. You know, she's not, the, she's not, she's mean and she's not always nice and da, 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 da. But then Latricia had to tell her, uh, you're not always the nicest person either, honey. She said, you nice when you sitting across from me, but you ain't always the nicest. And we see that all the time. We see that because she talks about people a lot. We saw that. We saw that she's called it a stupid brunch. We saw that she was like, I don't need nobody to help me uplift myself. And I don't see nobody doing nothing around here. She just had a lot of negativity around her. Remember at Tamara's Cherie's party and stuff? There was a lot of negativity, you know, coming from Latrice. So she got her attitudes too. We see that. Anyway, so we go to Tamara Cherie now, and she's visiting her doctor. Was that Dr. Perry or whoever he is? And he's her um, fertility specialist. Oh, Lord, tongue tied. And we know that she had this problem with the fibroids, and she's learning now. Oh, what we learned about her now is that she's 40 years old. So she don't have a lot of time to be waiting around to be having no baby. You know, she need to get it, hurry it up. So her doctor's now telling her that four of the fibroids came back and that she really needs to take care of them because they could cause, I mean, the fact that she's saving her eggs and all of that stuff, and then these fibroids get in the way. If she try to have a baby, it, it might cause the baby to not, you know, a miscarriage or something like that. So he's telling her she has to wear, get another surgery. And this child gets up in the stirrups. I don't know how many of y'all been in the GYN, but sisters, we don't get up in the stirrups with pumps on. And she had on heels in the stirrups. You're supposed to take those shoes off because, first of all, they're supposed to weigh her and all that other stuff they do. But I was cracking up. I said, Lord, help her. Look at her up there with the, the I don't know how many inches those shoes were. But she had them up in the stirrups. Anyway. Then we go over to Antoinette, and she's meeting with um, these black doctors, these young black doctors. And she said part of her opening up her, her practice is to, I guess, make way and give space for these young black doctors to have a place to go and stuff. And she wants us, the, the, all of them, to like, get together and do something to help, uh, to um, 
you know, move these, these black doctors throughout the, you know, help them throughout their, um, studies and stuff. She wants to support them in any way she can. So that is her dream. And that's what she wants to do. But here she goes again, inviting the one little white girl in Kaylin. Okay. Kaylin is what a nurse practitioner or something that she said, but what's she doing there? Why is she there? I, I'm just, I'm confused as to why she's there. I hear them talking and she said, oh yeah, I invited her so she can see and be around and know she doesn't want her to think that black people sit around talking about white people. Why do you care what she think and why are you catering to her? It's like we go through it all the time. Sometimes they need to go through it so they can understand it. Like the brunch wasn't enough. Anyway, but anyway, so Kayleen finally goes and she talks to her on the side, you know, and said, you know how. She sees this as a different, oh, she said Kayla now has a different perspective. That's what she was saying Um, of the black experience, you know, after sitting in with the doctors and then the brunch and, you know, so, so Kayla was saying she has more empathy for Antoinette now, knowing how it feels to be in a room full of all white people and, and, and not being able or afraid to open your mouth or whatever it was, she said, whatever, yada, 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 you know. And I'm sitting there going, mm, you really don't know how it is. Them two little things is nothing what us black people go through. When we the only black person in the office, the only black person at the job, the only black person in the group, you know, it's rough for us. So anyway, but then she mentions that um, she tells Kayleen she's going to have a rededication of her apartment now that she has redone it and her husband's gone and all this stuff. And the first thing Kayleen is like, who you inviting? Who you inviting? And she's like, well, I'm not inviting Marie. Marie's off the list. And, and then I'm not going to invite Letitia, Letitia either. You know, she said, because, you know, they, they're really close and I wouldn't want to do that or something like that. She said, I was like, whatever, whatever. She invites everybody. It's your house. You don't have to invite them if you don't want to. You ain't got to. This your, It's not like, they your girlfriends? Marie, I mean, Mel is your girlfriend? And what's the other one? Uh, Latrice. That's who you got to worry about? Anyway, so they move on, and it's Latrice, and she comes in the house, and his, it's her, what is it, her 50th wedding anniversary or something like that? And Cliff comes with her with a bag, or with a rose in it, and a bag of flowers. He said, you said you wanted some flowers. She was like, uh-uh, don't play with me. And she caught an attitude real quick. I guess, I think she said he always missing their wedding anniversary. But this time he said it'd be about her. So anyway, he was dressed up. He said, let me get dressed. He blindfolded her, put her in the cart, the golf cart. I guess they got a lot of property because they always on that golf cart. And they he took her all the way out to some area, took off the blindfold, and there was a table you know, a set with food and decoration and lights were all around and a big love sign, a big L-O-V-E, you know, love sign lit up in the in the middle of their property. And it was so nice. It was really nice. And who else was there? Was there anybody playing music? I don't think that maybe there was or wasn't. I can't remember if somebody was playing music or not. But um it was really nice, and I, I, I liked it. And then he gave her her gift, and the gift was a Rolex. And she jumped up, and she was screaming, Oh, I need my Rolex. I got my Rolex. How much she wanted it. So she started opening up to him and expressing to him about her abandonment issues and men leaving out of her life. And, and, and she states that there was something he said once about um, getting another woman or... He can get another woman if he want or something like that. And he got so upset about it and got nasty and started swearing. I was like, damn, Cliff, it's your wedding anniversary. We can do this later. But she's, you could see she was pouring out her heart and, and ex, trying to express something. And he just, you know, man, why do y'all do that sometimes? I, you got to get in touch with your feminine side, Cliff. You need to read Essence. She need to get him a a a, a copy a, a year subscription to Essence magazine, so he could get in touch with his feminine side or something. Anyway, so he went 
and jumps in the golf cart, yell, get mad and yell it, and drove off and left her. And the first thing she's doing is, here it is again, that abandonment. She felt abandoned by him. I said, damn, really, Cliff? Uh, it it was so, it was just so, I, I, I didn't feel I had to go there. But he took it there. Y'all let me know down in the comment section. I didn't think it needed to go there. They could have worked it out, but he took it there. And that's how their anniversary ended. And then you got Marie. She's at some little play yard and she's out there with her grandson. Which one? What, uh, grand, I think they all boys, right? Kai, the one is Kai. And then Cedric comes in. That's her husband. And we learned that he, he, he shows up and it surprises her. But she finds out that she she tells us that they haven't been talking much since for a while now. They're not, you know, communicating. He's not coming home and stuff. So we know that infidelity is going on all over again. That's probably what's happening and stuff. And she's like trying to figure out how he knows. She said, how'd you know? And come to find out uh, the son, Jerry, Jerry, what's his name? Jerry or something, whatever. He told him that they were there. And then he comes in, the son, Jerez, he comes in with the other child, grandchild, another one, KP, because he got three. So there was two of them there. And they're inside their little play area playing and they talk and she's thanking him for, you know, coming to the uh, the family um, therapy session. And he's discussing how, you know, things seem to be getting a little bit better between them because of the therapy. And he's glad and she's glad too. So they're happy about that. And I think that's when she told him basically that to get, she's building a, a, a million dollar empire here. And for him to get um, any of anything from it, that he has to um, graduate with a degree from college. She said, because what I'm building for you, you the next in line. And I, I swear her husband was overhearing it, but look, his ass don't come home. So why she, she care what he think, right? Okay. So, um, then we learned that Marie hasn't been having a good day. She has lupus and was diagnosed back in 2016. So, you know, lupus is a very, that disease that attacks your immune system and messes with your limbs sometimes. And she shared with us that she takes about 12, what is it, 12, 13 pills a day to control it. And it just wasn't a good day for her. So I guess this disease is why she's telling her son she wants him, Drez, to get his degree. Because if anything happens, he's going to have to run the family business. And she's counting on him, you know, to keep building what she started. Then we show Antoinette is at her rededication party, you know, in her apartment. Or oh, is it a house? It might be a house. It, from the front of it, it looked like it might have been a house. But we never see, we only saw the front of it for a short second or whatever. So, so then, um, of course, they're there and Mel is there and Latrice is there. And she got another one or two white friends up in there. And that's when she tells us that she is part, what did she say? Her African and... And African and Native American, she said they might not know, you know, because we know her dad is African because we've seen him over the phone. But anyway, um, Kayleen brings up Marie and, and stuff and how she acts. I said, why the white girl got to bring that up? At this party. I mean, it's why why are we bringing that up? You know, it's hard with people who they so mean and they they just always got to start arguments and you can't say nothing to them. And she's doing all of this. And I'm like, the white girls that hang out with the black people, y'all can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Don't do that. You never know. Because see, when she went there and talking about these brunches and stuff, Tamara had to jump in and said, hold up, wait a minute. Hold up, wait a minute. I've been doing these brunches for five years, hosting them, and we ain't never had no problem like this. She should have said we ain't never had no problem till you got there. But she didn't say that, but I thought she should. Anyway, so the, she said they never had no problems like this, and she defended. She said, I don't have a problem defending Latri I mean, defending Leticia and Marie because I know how they are. And obviously, it could be that when just when they get together, it's just an issue, you know. So, um, 
she said, we, you know, she was saying we as black women, we need to really stick together. And even though Marie and Latrice don't get along, she still feels that they could move forward and should move forward with this Ferris Street thing, you know, and keep things moving. Anyway, so then Antoinette is like, Ugh, like, I don't want to talk about this. Well, your girl brought it up. Your girl brought it up. And Kaylon seemed like she going to be a little issue. You know, she brought that enough stuff up. Anyway, um, and the fact that she could bring it up so much seems like she might have a little racism in her herself. I don't care what you say. I just feel like there's a little something that she might have been holding back, but she might feel she better than people. You know, it's just like, leave it alone. If the black ladies ain't bringing it up, if the sisters ain't talking about it, you shouldn't be talking about it. Don't be the first one to bring it up. Matter of fact, don't even interject and say, word, right, uh-huh, when they do talk about it. You keep your mouth shut, like we do. Anyway, so Antoinette, you know, um, she she gets the sage. They were drinking champagne and everything, and she tells the history of the sage and burning and cleansing the apartment and stuff. So she gives everybody a roll of sage. That's where the title comes from, y'all, sage and champagne. And they all a little tipsy and they lighten up the stuff and they got so much smoke in the doggone house that the alarm goes off and stuff. But did anybody notice her bed? Didn't uh, Antoinette's bed look small? I swear it was like a full-size bed. You was a grown woman. What you doing with a full-size bed? It looks so small. And ooh, the reason we find out is because while they burning it, uh, uh, what's her name? Latrice is like, oh no, let's get to her bedroom. We gonna burn it because you had to, um, what did she say? Um, she said you had to, um, set the attentions for her and her space. So they were setting the attentions for her space. So she said her intention for her was to get a big old black man with a big mandingo and all of this stuff. And she trying to smoke in her lingerie and stuff. She was like, and, and Antoinette was just she fell out the floor laughing. She's like, Latrice is crazy. That's my girl. She was like, you know, and they get along. I guess they get along in their ways the way Marie and Latrice get, I mean, Latricia gets away, all right, uh, get to get along. Lord help me. Anyway, so they're burning the sage. The smoke alarm is going off. Everybody's tipsy up in there, you know. <laughs> It was so much fun, and I've, I've I've seen that done. People tell me to do that in my house when I first moved in. So I, I understand that ritual that people do. So then it the story ends, the uh, episode ends with Cliff coming home. Cliff comes home, and there's somebody playing the saxophone, da, 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 and the lady telling him to follow the rose petals, and he follows them out to the back, and uh, let's... Latrice is sitting there and with a table set and stuff and she wanted to apologize. You know, she wanted to apologize for um, causing, saying anything to upset her, him that was not her intention and stuff, you know, and there was a pianist there and there was a masseuse and she had, you know, everything going on and she read what her feelings were and saying she, you know, what she was trying to do when she was opening up to him and that he just didn't understand it. And she, she said, I wasn't trying to say you cheating on me. I wasn't trying to say that. It's like she had to go through so much for this old dude. I'm sorry. Yes, that's your husband. But his reaction to what she was saying, you had to see she was opening up and then you just uh, turned into it. Come on. Come on, it just wasn't necessary. But she went through all of this, get him a massage, and and then she when she did the uh, red with her feelings and stuff, and he's like, yeah, but you shouldn't have had that because the thing is, I said, what? No, no, just say okay, honey, I accept, baby. Thank you, love. Whatever. Let's 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 do that. You know. But she went through all of that, getting him the masseuse, the sax player, the pianist, the mas you know, everything. And she talked and she shared again about everybody leaving her. And she has abandonment issues and her eyes was all tearied up and stuff. And he finally accepted her apology. And, and then it went off like that. And I'm like, thank you. That's all he had to do. But it seemed like next week, honey, did y'all see next week? Before we get to the next week, let's see, I would give this week, this week, what was this, about an eight? 
eight and a half, you know, nothing really exciting was happening this week, you know, on the episode, but next week, it seems like Tambra Marie, Cherie, and, um, Antoinette get into it, and they start arguing about being a black woman, see, because both of them is half white, as far as I know, oh, no, Tambra is, Tambra is half white, but, we're learning that Antoinette is the Native American and whatever and African. But anyway, it looks interesting. I hope it is. Um, this is your girl Barbie J signing off, saying peace.